السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ مائی رسپیکٹڈ مسلم بردرز اینڈ سسٹرز می اللہ سبحانہ تعالیٰ گرینڈ آل آف اس پیس پروٹیکشن اینڈ پراسپیرٹی آمین دی پرپز آف ورشپ ریٹن ان تفصیل معاف القرآن از seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for paradise paradise is one of the most beautiful place that exists it has been created it has been mentioned in Quran and Sunnah there are beautiful palaces rivers subhanallah delicious food halal attractive vibes subhanallah plenty of food and there's also hellfire which is a place of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's anger and ghadab and we seek allah's protection from it so we worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we want we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us lasting paradise because we all want to live there inshallah and we will live there because we have recited this kalma with proper responsibility la ilaha illallah there is none worthy of worship but Allah our beloved beautiful merciful compassionate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Muhammadur Rasulullah and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the messenger of Allah and this kalma will take us to that paradise and we seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection from hellfire because we love ourselves we take care of ourselves we work very very hard we are careful about our diet our food we do exercise because we don't want to get hurt so if we don't want to get hurt and don't want to put ourselves in harm's way in this world how about saving ourselves ourselves from hellfire which is which will be lasting for some and for a long time for others and eventually those who have recited kalima with ikhlas inshallah will be taken out of it and then we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for peace protection and prosperity afiyah so in tafsir of Quran the definition of worship is to seek to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for paradise to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection from hellfire and to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for afiyah peace protection and prosperity and that's where our today's topic come in comes in hope we all need hope it's very important and we cannot become negative we cannot allow ourselves to succumb to negative thoughts and the darkness of hopelessness no we are not going to do it we are we have our beloved allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us this glad tiding and before i share this ayah kindly like share and subscribe our youtube channel with the intention of sadqa jariya a perpetual reward a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim qul ya ibadiy allazina asrafu ala anfusihim o oh my dear muhammad alayhi salam say to my those servants who have wronged against their soul la taqnatu min rahmatillah do not be despair of allah's mercy 
in Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jamia without doubt Allah forgives all sins innahu huwal ghafurur rahim and Allah is most merciful and most compassionate most forgiving and most compassionate our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet of mercy the prophet for the entire mankind he has been sent for all human beings who are breathing right now muslims or non muslims in order to achieve salvation every breathing human being must believe in allah as the rabb and sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as the messenger of allah so our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his teachings are very positive teachings subhanallah kindness forgiveness mutual love respect for others no white has any superiority over black no black has any superiority over white subhanallah no arab has any superiority over non arab no non arab has any superiority over an arab so our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam reminded us before we get to the second coming of sayyidna isa alayhi salam sayyidna isa isa ibn maryam son of virgin maryam alayhi salam let's share this hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and the essence and mafhum of this hadith is if the day of judgment is upon us subhanallah and any one of you has a date palm seed then he should plant it before the day of judgment arrives and in its tashri and explanation ulama e karam have written that whatever khair we are doing we continue doing it i know negative news bad news sad news social media constant onslaught of social media and we succumb to it so quickly and then we become what we see what we hear what we think and that's not good for our iman and it's not good for our health and it's not good for our regular life it's not good for our kids to hear negative stuff all the time yes we all believe in in the day of judgment we all that's our aqida subhanallah but basi baad al maut will be raised but we need to give our we need to remind ourselves first this life is a beautiful gift of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we must beautify it value it and respect it we must remind ourselves my respected muslim brothers and sisters that each day is given to us subhanallah each day is given to us is up to us to wake up in the morning go to local masjid and start our day which is sunnat e muqqada of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and take that positive spiritual energy to our home and distribute it among our family members remind ourselves the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam expresses displeasure over people who 
do not offer their prayers at masajid. Subhanallah. So we begin our day and each day is filled with positive energy, hope and blessing. It's up to us to make it beautiful or to make it thorny. It's up to us. After having made Fajr, go to our business, our work, and remain hopeful and remain connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's where zikr wa muraqaba and waqufi qalbi comes in. And they play a very important role in our daily spiritual nourishment. So, hope. That's our topic today. We all need hope. Life is difficult with obligations, pressures, and the challenges that we face on a regular basis. We are all going through difficulties, all of us. We have challenges. But when we wake up in the morning, we need to remind ourselves. And these terminologies of the Safuf will help us. Don't reject them. Accept them. Badni Jamaliyat. We need to be at peace within ourselves. Modern science of, science of psychology calls it being proactive. So when we wake up in the morning, we need to program ourselves. We are going to be proactive for the rest of the day. And then there's Badni in Tashar being in a reactive mode, being angry, yelling, playing blame games, accus accusations. No. Let me remind you, we have attached our hope at a wrong place. That's where we have attached our hope. The answers are not there. We think answers are there, but not, no. The answers are with the second coming of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, and I'll come to it shortly, inshallah. So the good news is, subhanAllah, tough times do not last. Life moves in seasons and they change. We should be always in the state of gratitude no matter what we are going through. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remain grateful to our beloved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Adversity. I know we don't like it. But it's part of life. There's always a lesson to be learned from it. But we need to remind ourselves, go back to that verse that this Ajiz recited earlier, and that Hadith Sharif that this Ajiz shared with you, that there is hope at the end of the tunnel. We are not going to become hopeless. It's not, we are not going to go into the state of despair. It's not good for our Iman, and it's not good for our spiritual health. It's very important. Now, this is our Iman. SubhanAllah. In the second coming of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, this is our mutawatir aqeedah as a Muslim, as a Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaat. Like we all know, Alhamdulillah. Like we cannot reject a verse of Quran which is straight out kufr, disbelief. 
Likewise, we cannot reject mutawatir hadith. It's very important to understand this. And this is our mutawatir aqidah that Isa alayhi salatu islam was elevated. And this is our firm aqidah. One of the most biggest miracle of Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi salam, who is the last and final prophet. Khatam al Nabiyyin. There is no Rasul alayhi salam, no Nabi alayhi salam after him. He is the seal of the prophethood. And our Prophet sallam, as he ascended, he went to the high heavens. Subhanallah. He met Isa alayhi salatu salam. Also, when he led the prayer, at Bayt al-Muqaddas and he earned the title of Imam al-Anbiya he Isa al -Islam was there so we believe in the second coming of Sayyidina Isa al -Islam, and good things will happen after Sayyidina Isa al -Islam will kill the Jal, the Jali Akbar, Antichrist Subhanallah and then there will be a government. He will stay and he will, with his dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will get rid of Yajuj and Majuj, Gog and Magog. And then there will be peace, protection, and prosperity. To an extent, but before I get to that, let's refer to Quran. Aldo Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Wali Naja Allahu Ayatal Linasi Wa Rahmatam Minna Bakana Amaram Makdiya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Sayyidina Isa bin Maryam, Isa alayhi salam. We make him a sign for mankind and mercy from us and this matter has been decreed qadr taqdeer predestination then when isa al islam spoke in the cradle all inni abdullah atani al kitab wa ja'alani nabiya isa al islam said i am allah's servant Abdullah Muqam Abdiyat. Let's hope we will all be Abd on the Day of Judgment. Allah inni Abdullah and Allah has given me the book in Jeel, the Holy Bible, and made me. It made me a Nabi, a prophet. He furthermore says, Wajalani Mubarakan Aina Makuntu. Wa Ausani bis Salati was Zaka Maduntu Hayya. SubhanAllah. And Allah has made me blessed wherever I be. So Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam is blessed wherever he is. This verse is giving us some message. Do not distort the verses of Quran. Except Ijma'i Sahaba. It is gone Allah for him, Ijma'i. Accept it. Accept Ijma'i Ummah. Don't, don't disturb it and ordained upon me salah and zakah as long as I live. There's again a message for us. I say it as a humble student of Quran and Sunnah. وَبَرَّمْ بِوَالِدَتِ وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْنِي جَبْتَارًا شَقِيًّا And Allah has made me good to my mother and not made me forceful 
جبار ال فیڈڈ شقیہ وسلام علیہ یوم ولدتو و یوم اموتو و یوم اب اضحیہ and peace is upon me the day I was born and on the day I shall taste death that's after his second coming and he will live here and then he will establish a kingdom of justice of peace protection and prosperity justice for all and then he will die and he will bury, be buried right next to our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I shall taste death and on the day I will be raised alive then Holy Quran reminds us in a most beautiful heart-touching manner ذَلِكَ عِيسَ بْنُ مَرِيَمْ Subhanallah this is Isa the son of Maryam. قول الحق بالذي فيه يمترون A true statement in which they talked. So we Muslims, don't, there is no need for us to be ma'azallah hopeless and start telling our kids that the light, the this life is going to end soon and it's going to be all over. No, please give them hope. Inshallah, you'll become an alim. You'll become a hafiz. Alima and hafiza. Inshallah, you'll grow up. You'll grow up. You'll get married. You'll have a family. And maybe not us, but our children and their children will one day see Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. How fortunate those Muslims are going to be who will see Isa alayhi salatu salam in the state of Iman, subhanAllah. In the state of Iman. Who will sit in his Majlis Sharif. Who will submit salam to him and get his dua and, and listen to his mu'ayz, his nasiha, his beautiful sermons, how fortunate those Muslims are going to be. So, before I close, according to several ahadiths, this one is Musnad Ahmad, Al-Mustadrik Hakam as well. Sahih al That Isa alayhi salam, his government will be for 40 years. There will be only one religion. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Keep verse number 159 of Surah Al-Nisa as well in your mind. Always. And also, kids will play, toddlers will play with snakes, and snakes will not hurt them. There will be no zakat of goats and camels. Malice between us will be taken away. The poison of snakes will be taken away. A baby will play with the loin and loin will not hurt her. A wolf will act, will be like a protective dog of the herds of uh, goats. There will be complete peace all over the world. And no one will be worshipped but Ilahukum Ilahum Wahid our beloved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, in another hadith, Prophet said, 
those who will live after Isa Islam, Prophet said, Mubarak. And we, before I close, we Muslims, because we were recited this very important kalima. It's a masla fiqh to protect this kalima. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. It's a daimi fard as written in Umdatul Fiqh. It's a daimi fard. And also, we need to stay away from all form of kufr and shirk. And all the good deeds that we have done so far are under this kalima. That's why we cannot, Ma'azallah, ridicule this kalima. Or Ma'azallah, Allah many of us become in kufri Rabbana la tajallam, Rabbana la tajallam in hum. We can not negate this kalima. Our nikah is protected under this kalima. And because of this kalima, even if a non-Muslim, regardless of his life, if he says with ikhlas this kalima, he will become Muslim and he will go to par lasting paradise. So dear Muslims, there's plenty of hope. And I leave you with this beautiful poetry of Urdu language. इन अधेरों से कह दो अपना किनारा कर लें इन अंधेरों से कह दो अपना किनारा कर लें हम नए अजम से बुनियादें सहर रखते हैं एंड वी मेक दुआ फॉर शहदाय गजा मे अल्लाह एलिवेट दिस स्टेटस वी रिमेंबर आवर ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स इन पैलेस्टाइन they're defenseless. Ya Allah, grant them protection, divine protection. They're hungry, Ya Allah, give them food to eat. They're thirsty, Ya Allah, give them clean water to drink. They're sick, Ya Allah, cure them, Ya Allah, grant them shifa, Ya Allah. May Allah soften the hearts of the entire humanity for this very important humanitarian cause. Until next time, peace and blessings. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.